Okay, welcome everyone. Um, this is CM from the Blockchainers, and we're propagating from the heart of Korea. We're here to tell the world and the internet about everything that's going on in blockchain and cryptocurrency in Korea, bringing you that news interview, general goodness, and all of that Korean soul. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And if you want to co collaborate on a project, we're always open to do that. And as part of our collaboration today, we have a very... Um, very special project with an extremely thorough white paper, um, which I was really surprised to uh, surprised to read. And we have none other than Team Komodo with us, uh, PTYX and Goldenman, who represents uh, Komodo here out here in Korea. Guys, please say hello. Hi guys, how are you? And uh, Goldenman, you want to say hello? Yeah. Hi, this is Goldenman. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes. So as this goes, because I'm a Komodo noob and I just went through the 79 pages just a couple hours ago, um, Golden Man's going to be carrying the majority of this interview. And then I know that PTYX has a presentation stored up. So um, please, please be excited for this interview. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very stoked for it. So let's see where it takes us. So what's first on our, what's first on our agenda, guys? Okay. So I guess I'll, I'll give a little introduction. Um, I'm known as PTYX in the Komodo community, um, the support manager for the platform. Uh, I do other things, but mainly uh, people know me from the support channel. Um, also doing a little bit of um, business development in terms of reach out and, and doing stuff like this, uh, meeting with the communities and whatnot. Okay, yeah. What do you? Uh, what are you planning to share with us today? I know you got a presentation. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's a little presentation, just I guess to give you a little bit of the basics of Komodo, uh, such as what type of coin it is, uh, what kind of blockchain platform it is, and also what other features it has. Because Komodo is many things into one. It's not just one thing. Okay, so let's get started with that right away. Sure. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Um, this is just an overview of Komodo. Uh, you can see, I guess, a little bit of the comparison. Uh, Komodo is based on zero knowledge protocol. So you're going to have the privacy features of it. And that compares to the Zcash, Monero, Dash, or Verge, which um, actually use coin tumbling. So sometimes it's even an inferior technology. Um, as for the blockchain platform aspect of it, you have platforms like Ethereum, NEO, um, or Qtum, or EOS, which Komodo is comparable to because it's made to create smart contracts and, and also to develop apps on, on, on the blockchain. Uh, and also you can see the decentralized exchange, uh, which is comparing it to BitShares Waves and the Kyber Network. As some people know, I think um, the barter Dex is quite big right now in the atomic swap space. So... Uh, we can go ahead and start the presentation here. Okay. I like the fancy okay. animation. Yeah, yeah, that's thanks to, to Otto. He, he actually used this in one of the conferences in Korea as well. So that's why I think we'd use it because it covers the basics. So, um, so for people that don't know, Komodo was a fork from Zcash, right? So a lot of people see this as, okay, it's just another fork. But if we look at the code, the only thing that is left um, that resembles Zcash is the zero knowledge protocol. Uh, JL777, who is the lead developer, has literally expanded the code so much that it's a completely different platform. Um, so... With the zero knowledge, you have uh, provable uh, privacy. So that's really the advantage of, of using that technology. I think some people have asked us, why did we go with zero uh, knowledge instead of other protocols? And it's really because it's the only provable one at this point. Um, Komodo is flexible enough, though, that in the future, if something comes along that's better, we'll definitely consider it. Um, another aspect of, of Komodo that a lot of people aren't familiar with is the delayed proof of work. I think you told me you read uh, the white paper yesterday, right? Yes, I'm, I'm really feeling the delayed proof of work. It's like reminiscent, kind of like plasma, kind of like lightning, lightning network. So yeah, I, was, I, was, I really liked it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's amazing because James has been talking about this for forever. But in, in the idea is 
instead of fighting Bitcoin, right? Because that's what a lot of these projects are doing. They're literally creating coins to go head on against Bitcoin. But the hash rate is so tremendous that really it makes no sense to try to duplicate that type of hash rate. So you should be able to reuse that hash rate. So with a delayed proof of work, you, you have a second layer. Uh, think of it like a, as a, a 2FA for a blockchain, right? So you have the Komodo hash rate and this uh, blockchain information is getting notarized onto the Bitcoin blockchain. So we always have an anchor. Even if the Komodo blockchain is hacked or, or something happens, we always have a full copy literally on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so that gives it this huge uh, security layer that most of these coins don't have. And um, this actually passes over to our asset chains too. So in comparison to, for example, uh, an Ethereum, right? Where you would launch a token through the Ethereum platform. You're not deriving any security from Ethereum's hash rate. Um, the, that's not the case with our parallel chains or asset chains. Uh, you're actually deriving security from Bitcoin's hash rate. So um, this is a very, very important part of Komodo because it really will also help scale Bitcoin. Uh, if you can imagine the Komodo blockchain and you have thousands of transactions in the Komodo blockchain and those thousands of transactions are represented by literally one transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, all of that information is, um, I guess you can say, uh, compacted into that one transaction. That means that we can literally scale this to no end um, and still giving people uh, the, the Bitcoin level security. Yeah, so I, I had a I had a question about um, delayed proof of work. Uh, yeah, so, go ahead. Yeah, it, it was a it was a twofold question. So the first of all is because Komodo is in in essence, you guys are uh, issuing crypto assets, crypto yeah. assets on blockchain. So it seems like um, a competitor that people might naturally think of as something like Counterparty. Um, can you please explain? I know, I know you kind of lightly touch upon it in the white paper. Can you please tell us like how the idea of color coins of which counterparty is trying to do and what you guys are doing? Um, is it, is it like, are they diametrically opposed to each other? Uh, like, will, will people prefer one over the other? What do you think? No. And, and I, I think, um, obviously there's limitations and there's pros and cons to each one right and to me and in my own mind i believe that each one will have its own purpose and will have its own crowd now the reason why the komodo um solution is superior it's it, it's it's simple uh we're not providing meta tokens we're literally providing native blockchains and and the reason for this is because we want to follow what satoshi's vision which is native native blockchains. So basically when you create a, 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 an asset chain uh, or a parallel chain in, in Komodo, you're creating a copy of Komodo, which is fully integrated, but you're completely independent, right? So that's really what we're going for. It's more of a decentralization, independence. Um, these, these parallel chains are not tied to Komodo in five, 10 years. They, they will be able to migrate if they wish. That's how independent they are. They even have their own CLI, their own wallet that. It's a fully independent blockchain. Um, so yeah, but I mean, for example, I, I guess you, you could, uh, see the thing about the atomic swaps is that they're confirmation based, right? So I guess I could see how a proxy token would be better in some cases because it's faster to trade, right? Because you're actually not really, um, you're not making atomic swaps that are not confirmation based. So I can see how a blockchain, uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of one right off the bat, but the uses proxy tokens would be um, useful in some situations and then ours would be useful in other situations. For example, like uh, a startup launching a blockchain. Why would a startup, mm -hmm, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, along, along the same line of thought, something, I mean, you guys, were, you guys were in Korea with the blockchain Korea meetup, right? And yeah. um, so I, I, one of the criticisms that I can, I mean, as a investor, maybe that I can yeah. throw it. It seems like Komodo is extremely technology heavy, which is, which is uh, understandably important. But then yeah. it has a particular privacy thing. So, like, how would it benefit? Like, what kind of what kind of people would, um, like, what kind of startups would like to use either the Komodo, like, use the Komodo platform, or in in Korea, like, what kind of uh, Korean startups have shown interest in using the Komodo platform? Well, we can put it as simple as anyone who wants a blockchain that is secured by Bitcoin 
has a, a reason to use Komodo. So that's pretty much anyone. Anyone who launches a new blockchain doesn't have the infrastructure to be as secure as Bitcoin, but they definitely want that security, right? So any, any startup, I mean, uh, we can go, for example, right now we're talking to people um, that aren't even speaking about launching actual coins. They're speaking about launching utility tokens to integrate with apps. So, I mean, it could be anything, literally anything. And, and also you have to understand too that we, we not only have the coin feature, but we also have the KV storage. So you can literally create an app and if this app needs to store value on the blockchain, you'll be able to use the KB store to do it. So you can think of any, any type of solution, uh, you know, and, and we can integrate it. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be really interesting to see, like, because now we're getting more and more platforms, right? And whether mm -hmm. people will say, like, I, I've heard some people who are launching utility tokens straight up say ERC-20 on Ethereum is bullshit. And that, that's the reason that's the reason they're going over to waves but i um hopefully like because you guys have, have such a like private centric and then you your whole vision is providing every single asset that's released on the Komodo platform with their own blockchain i hope yeah i hope a lot of people are taking this into consideration when they're uh, trying to launch their project so if you think about it then for example like uh let's say you launch a blockchain right on, on Komodo, and and i don't know it gets huge and it just clogs up your blockchain, right? If this happens in Ethereum, there's going to be an issue. It usually will carry off into some part of the network. With Komodo, it literally is isolated to your blockchain. So problems in one parallel chain will not affect another. This is huge, like for scalability, for, you know, transactions that are stuck. I mean, you know, you name it and, and, and you can solve issues this way. Just keeping things separate, but fully integrated. Yeah, what I think is awesome is um, it solves the, it's in some ways, like you guys went ahead and solved the sidechain problem. So nowadays, you know, people are talking about like sidechain and then add that with proof of proof of work. And that's how we're going to scale the Bitcoin blockchain. But it seems like <laughs> whatever the method that you guys chose is basically doing that because you're adding yeah. a proof of proof of work. You're notarizing everything yeah. onto, um, you know, the, the blockchain that's right, right above it. So I, right. I, have a, I have a question because in your white paper, you say that, uh, the way you do this is by op return, right? And yeah, um, and you 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 clearly say that in the case that maybe an op return transaction is too expensive, we might consider using utilizing other um, proof of work blockchains. Has there yeah. been a case where you've um, put a notarization on another proof of work blockchain and? Not not fully, but um, I, I don't know if you know that I'm a notary node as well, so I have to I have take care of my notary notes and in it was uh i want to say like six months into last year's uh run uh we had an issue with bitcoin getting super slow it was literally unusable so we were about we got the notary notes ready to notarize onto litecoin we had them prepped up we had everything ready literally uh we just had to press the button to start notarizing onto litecoin and that just kind of shows the flexibility of of of, of Komodo. Um, we're not tied down to to Bitcoin's hash rate. We literally can switch it at any time. We just pick Bitcoin because it's it's the strongest one. Okay, or so the, uh, the highest. One. So when I'm going through all the history from back in the days, right? Would I yeah. would I be saying like, let's say um, up till block. Uh, 50,000, it was on Bitcoin. And then starting from block 50,001, you started notarizing on Litecoin. Then right. with the way, with, with the way that I, like with the way that I um, look at the history of the blockchain, up till 50,000, I would just be centered on uh, Bitcoin. And then 50,001, I, I, like Komodo platform would know to uh, direct this attention to uh, like to the Litecoin blockchain for the notarization. Right, yeah. yeah, well, basically like if we were to switch the notarization, we would pick a block. So a, a block in advance, um, whether that's one, two, three, four, five blocks in advance, whatnot. Uh, and as soon as that block hits, then the notarization switches over. And uh, yeah, I mean, since the op return is the same for, for all Bitcoin compatibles, it, it works out. All right. Yeah, you, you solved some of my questions, some of the questions I had for now. <laughs> cool, perfect. Uh, let me see what we have next here. I think I already went over this, which is uh, in the event of a devastating attack on Komodo, 
there's always a, a copy um, due to the delayed proof of work on the Bitcoin blockchain. So as uh, we move forward to the platform evolution, and then we get into the asset chains. So there's a little bit of confusion about, about the asset chains because I, I think you mentioned this because people do think that it's just like a meta token or a side chain and, and whatnot. Um, but what we want to do is we want to build a, a, modular plat a modular modular platform that is literally like the framework for people to just come on and start building their own applications, whether they want to store, I don't know, video game data, real estate data, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, we want to make it as simple as possible and we want to make it to where everyone does not actually depend on Komodo. And at the end of the day, they have their own, their own native blockchain. Um, do you have any questions about like uh, the, the specifics or parameters of the asset chains or uh, I, we, we started, we're debating on what to call them because we're really thinking parallel chain might be a better word for it because an asset chain sort of is, it doesn't explain what it is really. Uh, 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 what's different with the other blockchains token like a ERC20 on the Ethereum? Okay with our exchange? Well, the, the ERC-20 tokens uh, are not actual coins. Uh, they're meta tokens, uh, I think is, is the word for them. Um, basically, they're smart contracts. So I think my main problem with that is that you are not deriving any security at all from the hash rate at all. You're literally at the mercy of whoever wrote the smart contract. And you've seen what's happened with just little errors in, in smart contracts. People lose millions. Um, so until there's a way to really, really check these contracts and, and, or find a language that, you know, avoids uh, these, these problems, I think native is the way to go. Like, uh, so that's really my, my uh, view on it. Um, but if we speak of, of other things, for example, like the atomic swaps, right? This is a huge topic right now. ERC-20 tokens don't have op returns, but Ethereum doesn't have op codes. Um, so they're at a disadvantage. However, we've actually been able now to, to make atomic swaps uh, with Ethereum. This happened like last week, it, it's recent, but it's very new and, and you know, um, the mechanism will get mature, will mature, and, and will make it even more decentralized. But it's it's like James James called it a Charlie swap because they're not really fully decentralized. <laughs> but that's the, I think that's beautiful. Um, something that people are overlooking right now is it seems like everybody wants to be like that general purpose uh, crypto asset exchange, right? They, right? That general purpose decentralized exchange, and there's that way to do it. There's a way where you could try to onboard as many projects as possible, and there's the other way where you're just working on the interoperability and you're taking advantage of all the features from all the blockchains. Yeah, I think, you know, and, and um, I think you mentioned this about like the marketing, like we're, we're very like tech centered. We're not and now actually our marketing team is, is, is getting very, very, very good. And um, I'm very happy with it. But uh, I don't know. I think I think what we want is we're thinking about five years ahead. We're not thinking about today. Like the, I look at uh, Dash Litecoin. These are coins. These are, are, are coins that were solving issues when Bitcoin came out. Um, you know, the, this atomic swap thing. I, I read someone the other day say, "Why are you guys focusing on atomic swaps? They're not going to be relevant until like 2025 or something like that." But you know what? It's going to be relevant sooner. And when it is, we're going to be ready. It's it's going to be fully ready. And people are by that time, people are still going to be trying to catch up. Um, okay, I think I'm, I'm digressing, but. Uh, Golden Man's question, you asked what other comparison, right? Is there any other platform that you've heard about like that you want to compare yeah. it to? Yes, it, it, if there are more, more platforms than Ethereum and other platforms, do you have any comparison for them? Uh, let me see. I think uh, we were talking about this the other day. The, the only one that, that would be like more similar would be like the Kyber network, I, I would think. Um, that is more of like a modular platform, but really there's, there's, there's no comparison to me because we would have to take many projects, put them together and then say, okay, now this is compared to Komodo, right? 
See, I thought I thought waves was similar until I realized like they don't issue their their token. They don't give their own their tokens a separate blockchain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's the thing. You know, they're creating islands. We're literally creating each blockchain is an island, and we need to start creating bridges to talk to each other and and, and have these islands just move. You know. Uh, so we can move coins freely from one blockchain to another instead of pretty much I think of, of it like uh, the proxy token thing is for me like a, a dependability issue like you're depending on the platform fully completely so yeah. it's not yeah. you want to go on with the presentation let's uh, sure. presentation and talk about a lot of these like really interesting I, I really like the fact that the presentation is extremely interactive by the way Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're getting better. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me see. Yeah, I think I already mentioned this. So, like, the asset chains are not are not um, they're not affected at all. For example, like if Komodo died completely, the asset chains would still survive. Uh, and I think not a lot of platforms can say that. So, oh, I like your your mug. Did you see that he has the Komodo mug? Yeah, Kom Komodo, Komodo merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. So I, this gives you the specs of, of the asset chain. So basically, you can scale on, on demand. So like, for example, if you launch an asset chain, actually, people don't, don't realize how easy it is to launch an asset chain. You can launch an asset chain with one line of code. Sweet. So yeah, it's very, very simple. Literally, it's just the Komodo CLI command the um, AC name with the coin name or the, yeah, the coin name, the coin um, ticker, the supply, and that's it. I mean, there's other parameters, like I think you can make it mineable and stuff like this. Uh, but for example, like uh, Monet's did theirs insta, insta mine. So when they created the asset chain, all of the coins are created at once. Um, and yeah, you have the one minute block time. So with the asset chains, actually, when, when there's no transactions, no blocks are mined. And that's what the on-demand block means. As soon as it detects a transaction, it'll mine a block in the next minute. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. When you said about Monais, so many people asking these days about Monais, when, when it would come out. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I can't really like speak about when, when the DICO will be. That's something that uh, Monet's will decide and they'll announce. Uh, what I can say is that we're, we're completely ready. Uh, the technology actually was tested uh, a week and a half ago with the uh, um, Bitcoin Hush stress test, which was, it went perfect. So now basically uh, Monet's has, it's, it's a different app than the one that we tested. It's a very simple app. It's called the Atomic Dex. And the Atomic Dex will literally work like a uh, light wallet. So you'll be able to put your, you know, create your seed, put your seed in, then you'll get your uh, Komodo address and your Monet's address. You deposit your Komodo. Uh, actually, we added Zcash too. So you deposit your funds. And then at the bottom, it says buy Monet's. And you just click and it does the Atomic Swap and you buy your Monet's. So it'll be a very, very simple app. Um, I have tested it and I'm, I'm so happy with it because it's so simple. Like you don't have to think about it, you know, uh, and that's really what we wanted. So I can say that we're fully ready and you guys should expect other DICOs too. Um, not just the Monet's one. We've been, you know, working at hard on, on, on getting the, the Bitcoin dark swap fully uh, culminated. But once this is all over, then we focus fully on the other DICOs and the things that are actually coming um, down the, the pipeline. How many uh, DICOs do you have in the pipeline right now? If you just a um, number. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to say, uh, yeah, I don't want to say a number. There's there's a few projects uh, that are there, and uh, th they vary. They vary in industries. It's not just like um, a coin creation for for the sake of it. Um, but yeah, that'll come soon. I'll, I'll let our marketing. I won't steal their thunder. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have more questions. You said that there's the atomic dex. Is it simple version of the butter dex? Yeah, yeah, much simpler, much, much simpler. Um, and the, the barter decks really is 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 gonna evolve into like a, a, a Swiss knife for the atomic swap trades. 
but uh, the atomic decks, that's what people would use for the for the DICOs. And also what we are getting ready is a full package for anyone um, who creates an asset chain. They will have um, the Explorer, the wallet. They'll have the Atomic Explorer fork. So they'll be able to actually have all these tools forked uh, to their asset chain. And, um, and yeah, it's just simpler because if, if we did it through the, the barter decks, it would, it would be a, a long learning curve because it's so many things. Um, and I, I, I still think that the barter decks in a way we're testing it to see what works, you know, we're putting it out. So people tell us, okay, this works, this doesn't work. Um, but the atomic decks is so simple that it's literally just deposit buy. here's your monies withdraw. That's it. And it's, it's beautiful. The atomic swap uh, takes place in the background. You don't see any code, none of that uh, crazy stuff. <laughs> you, you're you're curious that is one of the biggest services of atomic swap. So, is there any yeah. other service using atomic swap? Is there any what? Any service from the Komodo platform? Uh, what do you mean, a service? I mean the products. Mm -hmm. Butterdex, one of the products. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Um, like a jumbo or any other things. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. So you have you have the Butterdex uh, and and Jumbler, uh, which actually you can use together. So the the Jumbler is a is a, an anonymizer. It's a blockchain agnostic anonymizer. So you can use um, the jumbler to anonymize uh, your transaction pretty much to uh, cooperate in a DICO in a private way. That's, that's something that you can do with, with, with the jumbler. Um, so yeah, let me see if there's anything else. Oh, can, I ask, can I ask one question about the ICO? Yeah, for, of course. You know, Korea recently we've been having discussions about uh, regulating ICOs and like banning banning Koreans from entering ICOs overseas. And I know there are some ICOs that have started uh, doing uh, when whenever it comes time to do KYC AML for Koreans. Now, some now if you are from a Korean IP or if you have Korean nationality, some people just because we, they have no idea where the regulation is going to turn, they're trying to um, blacklist blacklist Koreans. Um, for a DICO, let's say I'm from a com country that I'm not supposed to participate in an ICO. Can I still participate or how does that work? I mean, that's that's something that's really up to the user. Like, uh, it, it's not like we make the technologies to curtail uh, law. I think it's the responsibility of the user to know what law, uh, what jurisdiction they're in. Um, however, if we speak technology wise, if you were if you were to use if you were to use Jumbler with a VPN, for example, it would be very hard uh, to trace it back just because of the nature of Jumbler. Um, it, there's no data matching uh, when you look into the Z transactions. So it would really, it, it's something that's up to the discretion of the user. Um, I know that we, we create these technologies, like I said, not to curtail uh, law, but we wanna empower people. And I know that in countries where the people can't get money out for you know x or y reason things of this sort will help because it's a way for people to use their funds without having the fear of okay this is tied to me or whatnot um as far as the dico some some um investors don't want people to see how much they invested and literally all of the icos are are, are public i mean you can see the addresses and and, and the uh, collaborations and whatnot um so I mean, yeah, there's there's uses for it, but I guess it, it would uh, it would depend on the country. It would depend on how much they're monitoring and and you know many things. I I love the answer that you gave. You just made my day because <laughs> no, I'm serious. And I'll, I'll later on I'll ask Golden I'll ask Golden Man this question, but one of the things I was concerned about is because because we are uh, channel focused on Korean audiences is how significant. Like, why is the Korean market significant for Komodo? Other than like us having a huge trade volume, like what can Komo what can Koreans benefit from Komodo? And let's just say that um, the government does take a very very harsh stance to ICOs. Then you know, if it comes to like 
any ICOs that's done on ERC twenty or any any ICO that's done on waves, like it's closed off to the public. Like no matter what what you want to do, you can't do it anymore. But like then the ICOs added with like Jumbler, probably like Core and yeah. routing through you know routing through a VPN. Like that's the way that people can participate. Now here's here's the interesting thing when when you participate in an ICO, you're literally sending coins to someone. Right. And you're waiting for those coins to be accepted, processed, and then you get your funds back. With an atomic swap, you're doing a one to one trade. So this is something that I was thinking about, because in China, it's legal to do one to one trades. And an atomic swap is not a ICO participation. It's a one to one trade. It literally is what it is. So when you're buying into the ICO, you're not buying into the ICO as in a normal term. You're just trading your coin for another coin and it happens automatically trustlessly. And yeah, so that's another thing, you know, um, I guess if, if laws do come to, to illegalizing, I mean, it, it would be very hard. Um, and, and this technology could help a lot of people in, in many ways, just like encryption did, right? When privacies were being broken and whatnot and people created encryption to try to get some power back. Yeah, hopefully we don't have any backdoors uh, for <laughs> Komodo like we did with some some other encryption. Yeah, well, everything is open source, so they'll be able to check it for backdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Has there been a surge of interest for Komodo coming from the Chinese market? You know, the yeah. you know, they people said like the recent price drop was because of the whole like OTC banning scare that happened in China. Was there a surge of interest for Chinese? Yeah, we actually do. You know, it's strange because I get mixed signals. I I I see these things in the news, but yet we're receiving invitations to go present our technology to not a small group of people, literally like government officials and, and whatnot. And it, it amazes me because I think, okay, so what, what is really happening? Is there really gonna be a ban? To me, the government is just trying uh, to get a, some kind of control on it and you know tax it, tax it in one way or another. and. Uh, I, I've seen uh, actually well way before this, like probably like around a month ago, I've seen a surge of interest from from China, uh, from the Korean community too, and thanks to Golden Man as well. I mean, he's been like very present, like promoting and stuff. Okay, thank you. Do you still have more more with the presentation? Should you go back to that? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty much it. Uh, as, as far as, uh, I don't know, I guess if you want to talk about the atomic swaps, it, there's there's other platforms uh, claiming to be making atomic swaps. So I wanted to detail what are the advantages of our atomic swap exchange. Uh, our atomic swap exchange has a fully automated order matching. So where you have Decred and Litecoin making swaps that are command line swaps that are prepared prior and then they're set up in an environment, they're aimed at each other, and then they happen. You literally are just putting a buy order, a sell order in, and it does it all automatically, just like you would on Bittrex or in any other exchange. So that right there is huge, because that gives you an actual exchange or a market maker experience. Um, aside from that, you're also not trading proxy tokens. Uh, you're trading blockchain to blockchain. Um, we did, uh, I think I think I mentioned, we did an Ethereum to Komodo swap. Even those that are not fully decentralized, you can still track completely on the blockchain. Uh, that's something that I've not seen OX, I think it's OX or Altcoin, Altcoin IO. Um, I wrote them on Twitter. Uh, I wanted to see the back end of, of the swaps they were making. They never sent it, but you know, so you have to be careful with people claiming atomic swaps and actually not seeing what's really happening, if it's happening on the blockchain or not. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think you, I don't. I don't know how strong you guys uh, marketed the. It eth uh, Komodo atomic swap, but that's huge, <laughs> in my opinion. That is look, we had a few days uh, before uh, CoinDesk. I think it was CoinDesk. They published an article about atomic swaps. They mentioned Litecoin. They mentioned Decred, and they did not even mention us at all. So that shows you 
it's it's okay. I mean, it's fine. I, I think once uh, people actually understand what we've done, and 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 now that the actual GUI is ready, like people don't have to make command line swaps, uh, it's gonna catch on. But I don't know. I think I think unfortunately the market doesn't reflect the, doesn't reflect the true value of of the coin or the project. You know. But the 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 way you do approach. Um, this whole atomic swap though is quite different from other other um, other projects way of doing it. So for example, like today I was looking through uh, Decred's atomic swap, right? And you guys have you guys you guys actually have another step added there where you want um, you want one of the um, I think I think it's the person who's wanting to make the initiator. You want him Bob. to put up a deposit, right? Which well, is actually it's 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 Bob. So for example, like if you're a liquidity provider, you would be Bob. You're selling. So Alice is buying. Um, Bob puts the makes the Bob deposit, which he gets back once the actual transaction is is finalized. This all happens in seconds. So it's not like. Uh, you're waiting for someone to clear a transaction. It's and it's done through the opcode. So um, it's a different type of, of transaction. It's a time lock transaction. And and for you, yeah, it's just because everything is done in a GUI environment. It's, it's just a couple of clicks as opposed yeah, to it, like decred. You still have to go through this command line interface. Like there's no other way to okay. do it. Yeah, I actually, you know, it's crazy. I, I, I wish I had more time to to investigate uh, on, and really test these other platforms, but I don't. And um, I wish I did because I, I think that we are like super far ahead uh, of a lot of these projects. And you can see it, you can see it just in the tech and, and, and the way that, um, that the atomic swaps are being handled. We're showing people everything. I mean, from the initiating to the finalization of the swap, back end, front end. Um, but I think, you know, it'll take us a few months to really polish this GUI up. And, and get it to where people are just like really pleased to use it. So I had a question because, yes, um, you know, like for a very, uh, for a significant portion of your uh, video, of, of your white paper, sorry, you talk about UTXO sets, right? Um, mm -hmm. when it, and you talk about how barter decks is primarily focused on making sure that those, like you can, you can break down the UTXO sets, you can trans, um, you could trade one sort of asset to another. Does that only count for assets that are on barter, barter decks, namely like the Kamado asset chains, or it doesn't, that doesn't, in, um, include like what you just said about like ETH to Kamado, uh, atomic swap or like Bitcoin to Kamado atomic swap, correct? I guess the mechanism would be a little different, yeah. Um, but it's still it's still UTXO based in, in the sense that you're spending uh, or you're basing the atomic swap on an un, unspent input. So uh, I think with the Ethereum swaps, the only thing uh, that is different is how it's it's still controlled by one party in, in an essence, or there's still trust being placed in one party is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the difference. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Oh man, <laughs> it's uh, I have, I have a question for Golden Man, if you don't mind answering this. Yeah. So, because one, I know your background as a software engineer, mm -hmm. and then second of all, you're a Korean, so like why why did you why komodo for you why was why was komodo so attractive to you and how do you see it uh playing a role in korea in the future well i speak in english <laughs> doesn't matter okay you can, you can speak in korean yeah okay. uh, 뭐 아무것도 모르고 이제 그 뉴비일 때 샀는데 사고 나서 이제 걱정이 되는 거 내가 스캠을 한건 아닌가 그러고 나서 이제 공부를 했죠 그래서 번역도 하고 하다 보니까 괜찮은 거 같아요 그래가지고 열심히 파고 또 이제 내가 알고 있으면 또 다른 분들이 또 물어오시는 게 있더라고요 그래서 나누고 하다 보니까 점점 더 찾아보게 되고 아무래도 이제 한국에 내가 한국어도 글을 많이 쓰다 보니까 
이제 좀 비전이 있더라고요. 다른 데보다 플랫폼이고, 이제 하다 보니까 더 열심히 많이 보고, 또, 다른 코인, 사실, 코모도를 너무 열심히 공부를 해가지고, 약간 번아웃 돼가지고, 더못본 면도 있고요. 근데 이제 좀 약간 저 코인이 진짜 활성화된 세상에서, 물론 비트코인을 비롯한 암호화폐들이 지배하는 세상에서 뭔가 역할을 할수 있는 그런 플랫폼 기반이었고요. 물론 다른 코인들도 이제 좀 약간 차별화되는 면도 있고, 그리고 아직, 어, 좀 마케팅을 적극적으로 안 하냐는 질문도 많이들 하시는데, 제가 봐서는 아직 마케팅을 열심히 하는 것보다 기술적인 기반을 먼저 하고 하는 게 낫다고 생각하는 것 같더라고요. 이제 개발진들도 그렇고, HK에서 생각하는 것들이. 그래서 그런 면에서 이제 제가 좀 저도 이제 엔지니어 입장이다 보니까 계속 해놓은 것이 말만 하는 사람들보다는 좀 이렇게 알맹이 가지고 준비하고 준비된 걸 가지고 이렇게 말하는 사람들이 좋은 것 같아요. 그런 면에서 좀 제가 약간 반한 것도 있고, 그리고 제 앞으로 더할 것들이 더 많으니까 해놓은 것보다 잠재력을 저는 더 평가를 하는 거죠. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me just uh, translate that real quick. So, uh, uh, so Golden Man basically said that um, he was initially attracted to Komodo, and he was, you know, at the beginning he was afraid that it might it might have possibly been a scam. But the the more and more he studied about it, and the deeper and deeper he he looked into it, like it became much more attractive to him. And then his his thing with Komodo was like that it was tech tech centric. That right now. It's time to be focused on the technology, and maybe it's not time where you need to go all in on marketing. So he's yeah. he looked he looked he was looking for it in the long run, and uh, he thinks that it'll really pay off. Um, like looking into the future. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, I agree. <laughs> I agree. It's good. Did you? Um, I know. I know. I'm. I'm like. I, I, like I really don't want to steal. Uh. The marketing team thunder, but like when you came to Korea, uh, did you meet like different corporations or like part? Did, were there any like kind of partnerships that were formed or some sort of understanding that was formed? I think that's for Golden Man, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Golden Man, were there? Are there any? So far, no. Okay. But yeah, someday I hope. Yeah. I think you know. I, in my in my opinion, I really think a lot of Korean corporations are trying to figure out like what can we not not like forget enterprise blockchain. Like I think enterprise blockchain is just database. It's just um next next iteration of like the whole like private database thing. But when it comes to like public blockchain, they're really looking for um like just just the other day, I had somebody from a major conglomerate come um, message me, and they were they said, hey, I want like um. Blockchain teams that are that are very tech savvy, and I want to contact these people. I want I want to work with these people, and because we kind of want to, we want to we want to kind of have a project that we can show. We really prefer it to be a, um, like a Korean project. But like I mean, right now Korea's Korea blockchain teams, I think is we're uh, we're working. We're in a, we're in the nascent stages. So I would really like if there was a team like Komodo in Korea, I would definitely recommend you guys. Actually, the Monese is the one of the. Good example for the corporations. They are not a blockchain company. They are other real world companies. So they just join the blockchain to empower their uh, their works in their industry. So it's gonna be a good example for the other industry to cooperate to the Komodo platform someday when the blockchain is more common in the real world. So yeah, yeah. All, no, I, mean, I think I think as as we move. Uh, forward and we make it easier to to, to actually uh, integrate into the platform and we have more presence in, in Asia and all these markets I think more people will come you know um, right now we're still like taking baby steps I think uh, the, the technology is so new it's like it's like trying to sell someone an airplane when there was just buggies and horses you know people are like what is that stuff like you know but when it's when it comes time, people I think will understand the the significance of it, and and then we'll really have to prepare because we'll have a migration to Komodo platform. We'll have people. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but you can take an Ethereum uh, ERC twenty token, 
uh, you, you can swap it for a Komodo asset chain, <laughs> and then you'll have a native blockchain, and you can migrate away from Ethereum. So I think you know we'll see a lot of migration from a lot of platforms to Komodo. Oh, I love I love what you just said. Yeah, I was um I was. I was at the um, like the EOS party and whatnot, and there's a lot of um, just just to give give everyone heads up. I obviously we're gonna see a lot of reverse ICOs, right? So pre existing companies who wanna issue tokens and now they're they're about to do it, or and um, all ev everything that they're concerned about, their whole business model lies on which platform they think is gonna make it. But everyone knows that no platform is secure, so. Whatever yeah. platform gives them the most flexibility when it comes to migrating their tokens, just in case for that particular platform shit hits the fan, like yeah, that platform yeah. is going to attract a lot of people. Exactly, exactly. You know, it's 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 beautiful. Like literally, if Komodo dies, the asset chain can set up their own notary nodes, so they can start notarizing onto Bitcoin. Yeah, that's like, you know. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it's it's that's the beauty I think about Komodo, and and uh, we're not aiming our software at people's pockets. We're aiming it at solving issues, and you know, I think it'll pay out in the end. Yes, I think so too. I have a question. Um, there's a question from the audience. So RTP asks, any view on Loop Rings technology with regards to barter decks? Any of you what? Any views on loop rings technology with regards to barter decks? I'm not, uh, I'm actually not versed on, on loop rings. I can't answer that one. For everybody that's tuning in, if you guys have questions that you want to shoot at uh, PTYX, because I think, I think you're, he's done with his presentation. So please go yeah, ahead. I think, I think this is it. Yeah. I mean, um, what what follows is just like a little bit of what's coming as as far as um the the marketing where is it at yeah the marketing schedule they released a uh, an update so as you can see they're going to be quite busy in the first and second quarter of this year mm -hmm. um, quite a lot of stuff coming out um and it's it's not only about actually just revamping what Komodo looks like. It's more literally like a restructure of how the marketing is done and how it's collaborating with uh, with support and with uh, development. So where Komodo was, I guess, inefficient before, now we're really starting to. Uh, work dynamically and, and that's we're seeing the results I mean in these past few months we've done quite well um, in regards to getting the information out there and actually doing it like in, in, in a good fashion um, so yeah I think I think a lot of good things are coming you know and, and all of these things come from the community because they tell us you know <laughs> if something is wrong like if the marketing sucks we have to fix it so like, uh, yeah, you know, all of this feedback is great because we're growing really with people's feedback. Yeah, the marketing is the easier part to fix. The tech in blockchain, once you have it deployed, you can't fix it. You'd be surprised, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's it's Usually it's the other way around. Or wait, is it like you have good marketing and no tech? I think that's usually the case. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Blockchain is it's it's closer to it being like something like hardware than it is being like software. It's not forgiving. You make yeah. a mistake, you're just screwed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's another question from uh Shiptar uh Lani194. He says he asks, I remember reading that Komodo will be doing one ICO at a time. Do they plan to change this if there is demand? Can they handle more than one ICO each time? Okay, so I think I, I mentioned this earlier about creating a, um, I guess you, if you want to call it an SDK, like some type of development kit where uh, someone will be able to launch an asset chain and they will literally have the wallet, the Explorer, everything set up with a one-click option. That's, that's our goal. So what this will do, it will allow anyone to launch uh, not only their own DICO, but their own asset chain or parallel chain. However we're not going to be able to give our full attention like we did with Monet's to everyone. 
So when uh, we say that we're going to be doing one DICO at a time, what we mean is that we're going to be taking one strategic partnership at a time. So as the Monet's um, partnership uh, flourishes and, and we're done with the DICO, um, then we will move to, to our next partner, focus solely on them and move to the next. However, in the background, there will be many things happening. So yeah, th there will be a, a lot of many DICOs uh, happening at once. Maybe we will not be sponsoring or, or being standing behind all of them. Um, I think I've discussed this with someone uh, and, and the team's been discussing it. We need to find a way to uh, vet these projects. So in, 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 in my mind, what I was thinking is coming up with a community vote based um, mechanism to where a project that we're not actually saying this is our, our partner, right? But they create their asset chain, they create all of their stuff. They can present the project and then the users vote if they want that project launched or not, depending if the project has everything in order, if it's just vaporware, you know? Um, but I think this stuff will come, you know, as we grow. It's it's part of like the governance and, and it's it's really what blockchain is evolving into. Uh, one more question from um, Axel Huron. He asks, mm -hmm. could we have a, how, how can we have a look on the Atomic Dex, which is simpler than Barter Dex to use? So can regular people look at Atomic Dex? Where can they access it? Yeah, um, I guess I can send you the link when we're done because I don't want to take the, the presentation down. Uh, I'll send you the link when we're done, but it, we actually made it available in the TradeBots channel on Slack. It's on the GitHub. Uh, it, it's, it's made available for anyone who can uh, build it. Uh, it's, it's very easy to build if you have a Mac or a Windows, but it's not packaged yet. Uh, so it's not like a one-click app. So basically you just um, launch it and then you'll be able to use it. But uh, I'll send you the link and then I'll ask also our developer to maybe if we can package it to, to, to get it out. Um, we didn't want to put it out because like we put it out for the Bitcoin hush test and it, it worked very, very well. But um, Manaze is actually taking it and making their own version of it. Like they're making it, you know, putting their graphics and stuff on it. So we wanted to wait for them to give us their version so we can actually test that and then put it out. Um, so people start to get used to their their graphics and whatnot for the DICO. But yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Um, just... One more question. Uh, the Rebel Awakes. Yes. When will Bartodex be able to take fiat currencies? Um, that's something that will depend on the liquidity providers. Like, for example, Komodo is, is not going to get, himself, get itself involved in KYC or fiat crypto um, uh, exchanges. But what's going to happen is, is that partners like Monet's or liquidity providers will be actually, licensed liquidity providers will be able to set up liquidity provider nodes that do these USD, Euro, fiat, crypto trades. So basically what we will have is, we'll have our partners who will be offering fiat gateways and we'll also have the liquidity providers that offer decentralized fiat gateways. Decentralized in meaning that it is not centralized and it, it's not held by us. It's literally just a, a decentralized network of specific providers. Um, I think we could see this happening uh, by next year. I mean, or, or within this year, I mean, it really depends how fast the space moves because what is gonna come down to is how easy is it for someone to set up a liquidity provider node? Um, they're gonna have to literally, it's a learning curve. You know, uh, they have to tweak it for their percentages, for their spreads. So we really have to get this prepped so anyone can just come in and pop up, get it ready uh, quick. So, it, you know, it could be this year, it could be next, but it's it's definitely gonna be happening. Yeah. Um, Oranid asks, the white label DICO are a great concept, but how do you address technical issues if you're not focused on non-partners? Technical issues in what sense? I mean, uh, as far as the kit that we're gonna be providing, the kit should provide everything as far as uh, any knowledge to solve any issues and um, it should assist that chain to have their own support. And this is this is what this vetting thing is coming down to. Uh, the, the vetting process, you know, I think it is the community's choice if they want to launch a project that maybe doesn't have support or maybe they do and they have really great support. So, you know, 
it's something that we're not going to be able to control fully, but we'll definitely give people everything they need to get themselves prepared. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, imagine if we focus on non-partners. I mean, that would that would be crazy. <laughs> if you when you say the vetting process, are you just talking about um, their tech? Uh, their technical savvy, or are you also talking about like, um, like the 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 ideas behind the project and whatnot? Well, no. For example, like if if I want to launch a project, right, and and I go through the vetting the vetting platform of Komodo, right, and I upload all my documents and I put up all my team's information and I show that I have a company, I have registration contracts, I have substance, you know the the community will see this and say, okay, this is an actual project. But if I have a white paper and I have no teammates and I have no visible substance, then why should we let this uh, launch on the platform? Obviously, it's not our decision because it's open source, but I do think that there should be a betting mechanism for the community to say that project is not going to launch. It's, it's vapor, you know, and I think we'll be able to tell also very, very quickly which projects are good, which aren't. And if we set up, um, for example, if you want to launch a DICO, right, you pay a fee, which this fee is held for development or whatever, but this also will cut down spam. Um, you know, just someone making random asset chains to, to spam Komodo. Yeah, I think the vetting is helpful because, um, you know, like the, my one of the one of the use cases, horrible use cases we thought for Ethereum is a um, assassination market. Assassination. Oh, I mean, it's horrible, but like assassination market smart contract. But that's what happens if you if you have like zero vetting processes and you you make it where yeah. anyone can take ERC twenty tokens and you can just uh, spin up a spin up an ICO, spin up some market, and then what are you gonna do? The whole platform gets a bad rep, or the regulators are gonna come down extra hard just because you allowed that to happen. Exactly. Yeah, and then that's another thing too. Like if if we have one person right saying this project is good, this project is bad then this puts all that pressure on one person and we're a community. So it should be all of us looking at a project and saying, this one is going to launch. This one isn't for X or Y reason. So, I mean, it's something that is not concrete yet. And obviously it's not like, you know, we have currently thousands of the ICO, so we're not getting over flooded or anything of the sort. We're getting a lot, a lot of requests and a lot of them are vaporware. Um, some of them are not. Some of them are real, real projects. So, I mean, I think these things will come into place, but it's something to think about, you know, for 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 the DICOs that are going to be happening, especially with the the anonymity feature, where people are going to be able to invest with the privacy of Jumbler. Now, this does not mean that the DI that the ICO issuer is going to be anonymous. That is completely incorrect. The ICO issuer should be the most anonymous person. We should know everything about that person. Uh, because why? Because we should have vetted it before, right? So. Oh, thank you. That's that's really insightful. Yeah. All right. Um, I think yeah. I think I have. I'm done with everything that I have prepared for today. Well, the okay. man, do you have anything? Ptyx, do you have anything else? No, I think we pretty much ran it. Cover. Yeah. I mean, Goldman, if you have any questions, yeah, go, uh, go ahead. You already answered. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, no, so I think, I think we got it all. <laughs> all right. Yeah, before before we sign out, any last words? Um, I, well, I want to thank everyone, really, uh, the people that have stuck with us. Uh, recently, we've been dealing with this Bitcoin dark swap. We gave people a year, and there was uh, literally like the last swaps that did not process gave us more trouble than the whole year that we gave for people to swap. So... I just want to thank people for bearing with us. And also the, the notary elections are coming up uh, in March. I think they will happen. A lot of information will come out before then. So we'll have a voting system for the elections. And we're going to try. Well, I mean, it's not like we're going to try and fail. We're going to make it a blockchain voting system. So people will be able to vote for their notaries uh, through the blockchain. And uh, I don't know. Uh, if we speak about the notaries, it's about the delayed proof of work. So the notary nodes are the ones that run the servers that protect Komodo or the second layer um, of Komodo. So, yeah, I just wanted to let people know, you know, keep an eye for that and, and always try to pick the best, uh, the best candidate because we want good people on, on the servers. 
Uh, Golden Man, uh, any okay. last words? So many people said, why Komodo companies do not marketing on our products, but maybe we are, we are start to doing that and we are just warming up things. So maybe this year is gonna be a year of Komodo, I think so. So please keep an eyes on us and expect what's gonna do and we'll, we'll show you something. Yes. Okay. Thank thank you guys. Thank you so much for being on the show. Perfect. Uh, thank you so yeah. much as well. Uh thank everyone for tuning in. And once again, this is a blockchain. This is a CM from the blockchainers, and we're propagating from Gangnam, which is in the heart of Seoul, which is in the heart of Korea. And we're trying to tell every everyone around the world about what's going what's going on in blockchain crypto ecosystem bringing new news interviews general goodness and that good korean soul if you like this content please like subscribe and comment below if you have further questions for the komodo, komodo team please write it write it down in the comments and i'll try to relate to them as much as possible we'll probably be getting like an english and a korean transcript out so yeah feel like please refer to it later on in the future so and then one one more yeah if you want to collaborate on a project if you want to get your uh favorite project on the show, please uh, drop us an email at theblockchainers at gmail.com. Yeah, because we're always open to do that. Anyways, yeah. So everyone have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And we will Thank see you, so you next much. time. Thank you. Thank you, Blockchainers. <laughs>